General features of bloodstain formation. If you find a blood stain at the scene, you'll need to take a look at the pattern. They might take on a sort of a splattery kind of a pattern. It might be streaky. It might be smeared. Whatever it is that you see, it should elucidate. That is, make clear the direction from which the blood originated, the angle at which the blood droplet struck the surface, the location or position of a victim at the time a bloody wound was inflicted, the direction that the blood drips from that wound will tell you what the direction of gravity was and that'll tell you how their arm was being held at the time, or the armor, <laughs> I'm looking at the picture and saying arm, um, that body part was held at the time that they were injured. The minimum number of bleeding hits that a person took you may have a lot of blunt impact trauma as well as bleeding trauma, and you should be able to differentiate the two. And the approximate location of the person, um, sorry, the approximate location of the person who was um, the perpetrator versus with the approximate location of the person who was the victim. Major features of blood stains include the parent stain, spines and satellite droplets, drip trail, a pool, you should be able to feed, um, describe the surface texture, and skeletonization. The parent stain is the major, let me use a different color since we're doing a lot of red here, let me pick blue, is the major portion of the stain. The spines and uh, satellite droplets in, uh, involve these sort of sticky outy parts. Those are your spines and the outside droplets are your satellite droplets. They may be connected or they may be separate. So here is your parent stain, here is a spine, and here is a satellite. A drip trail refers to a series of these droplets. This whole thing is called a droplet and um, a series of these droplets in line refers to a drip trail where you can draw a line through them to create a, um, a path. A pool is a larger droplet of blood that sort of self holds a little bit. The surface tension is able to self hold on the outside so it doesn't really have those satellites and spines and contains a decent volume of blood that's, um, that's uh, gathered together or has simply sort of flooded out of a person rather than spattered or dripped. The surface texture of a blood stain can tell you how much coagulation has happened, how fresh it is, whether or not any amount of it's been absorbed, whether or not it's completely dry. Skeletonization refers to the phenomenon where when you wipe away a blood stain, a little bit remains behind of it in a ring. So if you take this blood um, spat that's right here, and you let it dry for a couple of minutes and then you go to wipe it away. You might have noticed this when you get a cut that you can't wash off right away. Most of that that remains fairly liquidy will wash away easily, but you'll have a crusty ring of blood that's left behind that you need to um, wipe away with a little bit more oomph. That'll suggest that um, blood had been smeared or had been um, uh, uh, attempted to be quickly wiped away. Features of blood stains. The, the appearance of blood can be affected by the surface impacted. In this case, this blood was um, dropped out. This piece, droplet of blood hit a um, hardwood floor. It appears to be unfinished. So the blood soaked into the wood a fair bit. It created this sort of semi sheen with a um, semi gloss kind of an appearance with um, a fair bit of absorption into the wood itself. If you would have had that same droplet on a freshly waxed basketball court, it would take on a much different appearance because none of it would have soaked in. If you'd have put that same droplet down onto a sofa, it's going to soak in pretty readily into that sofa, assuming it hasn't the sofa wasn't treated in any way, um, and it'll spread out as it's wicked up into the fibers. And some of that volume will be wicked into the couch by the stuffing of the couch as well. Um, if you put a droplet on ceramic tile that's been unfinished, a little bit of it will soak in. 
um, if you put a droplet onto a piece of glass, you'll have this nice um, tight bead look of the uh, droplet. It'll um, its own surface tension will be greater than the um, adherence to the surface underneath, and it won't stick to it at all. It'll look like a nice little bead. Um, the angle that it's been impacted, if you have a blood droplet that hits something at a 90 degree angle, so straight down onto a surface, that's going to create a nice round kind of, and of course you have your um, satellite um, droplets in your spines, nice roundish droplet. If you have a um, blood drop that hits something at an angle, hits right there, it'll take on more of a teardrop shape with the tail pointing in the direction from, um, from whence the blood drop came. The speed of impact, if you have a blood droplet that hits something at an angle that is uh, moving fast, you'll have a long droplet. If it's slow, you'll have a shorter droplet. If it hits at a 90 degree angle quickly, you'll have sort of a, a little um, parent droplet with these very big sort of spines and maybe a lot of satellite drops. If it hit from very close range or very slowly, it might keep a, a more round sort of a, a shape to it. The direction of impact. Um, so a blood is blood is going to spatter back differently based on whether or not um, the blood was ejected from an entrance wound or whether it has was spurted out with an exit wound. The direction and speed with which the blood exits either of those places will be different.